Welcome to Game Data. This week is our final video in our series about Steam controller usage. On the previous videos, we went over some of the controller's history, followed by an overview of different use cases with Windows 11. This week, we're checking out how well it works with Android, because, well, to put it lightly, there's actually some key differences here you might want to consider if you mostly game on Android and want to use this controller. As a caveat, we're specifically looking at Android 11 and 12 functionality here for most of this commentary, since that's what most people tend to be using these days and will continue to use going forward. If using an older version of Android, there might be subtle differences in functionality since controller compatibility appears to get generally better with each new version of Android. Well, okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. In our previous video, we determined that the Steam controller was fantastic when used with Steam games, albeit with some quirks that you need to work around to get it working just like you want. However, outside Steam, there appeared to be a lot of work needed to make the controller feel just right, unless you were satisfied with emulating a mouse with basic navigation keys. Still, it was usable, and for the right kind of person, it could be a game changer as to how they play a specific game, if they want to put in the work. Android laughs at all of that like an old school anime villain. With a more full-fledged OS, getting the controller connected is fairly seamless. Connect via Bluetooth, attach a dongle to a computer, or plug in a cable, and voila, it just works. No matter the connection, you're able to get some sort of basic functionality. With Android, that's not necessarily the case. I mean, yes, those same connection options are available, but they're not all equal, regardless of whether you're using it with a game or not. Connecting via Bluetooth allows for a limited set of mouse controls, which is admittedly kind of neat to see, but it's not really all that useful. With a desktop, mouse mode could at least be justified by being a neat navigation alternative while sitting on a couch. But the limitations of mouse input in this case mean that you'd definitely be better off using a standard Bluetooth mouse or a stylus if you want a more comfortable experience with a mouse cursor. But, you know, that's whatever. Bluetooth can be finicky, right? This is Android, and we can just attach the dongle with a USB-C adapter for a more reliable connection, right? Well, you can, but Android interprets the dongle-enabled connection as a keyboard. That doesn't necessarily sound bad, but you no longer have the awkward mouse input and exchange that for a keyboard implementation that isn't too much better. Really, the only way to go here is to grab a micro USB cable and hardwire the controller to your device. When connected directly, this appears to activate X input mode for use as a standard controller. Nothing inherently special about this, but it's also at least functional. And this is really the first point of friction with this use case. Using the Steam controller with Windows feels unique and occasionally utilitarian, but just from trying to get this device connected and functional on Android, there feels like less reason to use this controller with my phone or even a tablet compared to something more solid like an Xbox or DualSense controller. That's also mirrored in the fact that the unique shape and size of the Steam controller make it so that I need a custom phone clip to use in handheld with a phone. Now, I'm probably the best use case scenario here. You know, I already use phones for both my primary and secondary devices that are foldable and can't fit into standard phone clips or do most things that a regular phone can do with accessories. I'm used to propping it up on a table or finding a unique way to actually view it for myself and use it with a controller. However, someone using something more conventional, like an S22 Plus, is likely going to have a much more awkward time if they can't attach their phone directly to the controller itself. That alone could be a deal breaker for most people, and I wouldn't blame them. But let's assume the best. 
Maybe you're wanting to fiddle with connectivity issues and like me, you're using a phone or tablet that can be propped up on a table for easy use. Given that, how does the controller actually feel to use within a game? To test this basic functionality, I first went with my go-to streaming service, xCloud. The service tends to work fine whether I'm using an Xbox controller or a third-party offering like something from 8 Do. The bar is really just having enough buttons to utilize a game's controls and feeling good to play for an extended amount of time. For science, I first tried playing games on the service with the controller first connected via Bluetooth and then with the dongle. In each case, games either failed to recognize the controller's input or had a limited set of controls available to use. That's not really the best experience, so I moved on. Connecting the controller directly to my Fold 3, I quickly saw the difference in games. Controls were mapped as expected and everything was actually playable. But it was immediately obvious that none of the games I played quite knew what to do with the touchpads. The left touchpad was usable as a D-pad, but proved way too finicky for my liking. For example, in Fallout New Vegas, the D-pad is mapped to scroll through weapons. Hypothetically, that should be super satisfying to do with a round pad. Yet, the cardinal directions didn't appear to function correctly, and tapping diagonally on the pad was overly sensitive while not always feeling all that accurate. This awkwardness continued over to the right touchpad as well. It felt more like a D-pad than a trackball in use, if that makes sense. And that's really not necessarily the greatest experience for moving a camera around. In typical desktop use, my thumb would swipe or move across the pad to change the direction and speed of the camera movement. Here, the camera moved at a uniform speed as soon as it detected any input whatsoever. By placing my thumb lightly on any direction, the camera would continue to move until I lifted my thumb up. If not a D-pad, I'd at least liken the experience to use an extremely loose joystick. It's generally unsatisfying and feels less accurate overall than using a more standard modern controller. The entire experience was pretty disappointing, not gonna lie. Even for platformers, it's not ideal since the face buttons are a bit too small for my liking. In general, I'd say the Steam controller is usable for this use case, but not very comfortable once the gimmick of it all fades away. But okay, we're using the Steam controller outside Steam. As we saw with Windows games, using the controller outside Steam strips away a lot of configurability and results in some genuine frustration when controls don't quite mesh. Hypothetically, this shouldn't be an issue with emulators. Most popular emulators have some functionality to remap buttons or require the remapping to be set up front to use. Regardless of the troubles I had using the controller like a more standard controller, all these extra buttons and input methods should be great for services requiring key bindings to be explicitly set, right? I wish. For my tests, I used the standard public release of Dolphin. My game of choice was Mario Kart Double Dash. The idea was that Double Dash has a very simple control scheme, only four buttons, A, X, Z, and R, really need to be mapped along with the joystick for movement. It's basic enough that even touch controls work really well. So I was hoping that I could play through some races, boil the entire experience down to whether I felt the controller was comfortable to use, and just move on to something more complex. Unfortunately, that's not quite what I found. Again, for science, I tried non-wired connections and ran into some hiccups with a Bluetooth connection. When trying to map buttons to the GameCube layout, it just didn't work out. The default mappings to the controller were unmappable and didn't register at all. At this point, that seems pretty much on brand for connectivity. While the dongle connection was usable, I tried to remap item usage to the grips and the trackpad to accelerate, and everything started to become unstable. Dolphin interpreted the left and right grips as the left and right directions on the trackpad, which I didn't notice at first because it doesn't quite make sense. Worse yet, the area for the center of the trackpad, where I'd mapped A, 
blended quite a bit into the other directions. This meant that as I was playing, keeping my thumb on the trackpad resulted in really comfortable acceleration, but any minute movement from center caused my items to be used. Remapping acceleration back to face buttons was also difficult with this setup, since even brushing slightly against the trackpad triggered a button press. A wired connection went much simpler, surprisingly. As with any other controller, I was able to go through the mapping and set up each button with a GameCube layout. It worked fine in-game as well, and with the standard layout, everything felt comfortable to use. My complaints were pretty much the same as if I were using an Xbox controller, since the layout of a GameCube controller is just shaped differently, making the face buttons a bit awkward on more standard layouts. Again, I tried remapping controls and everything worked out well. I continued to fiddle with it a bit more to get it where I wanted and found that the wired experience was more than adequate for a game like Double Dash. However, the remapping snafu with the dongle connection highlighted that the grips weren't being properly utilized here unless it's wired, and the sensitivity of the trackpads could prove troublesome if I tried to rearrange controls to wherever I wanted. To check things further, I checked a couple other games for both Wii and PS2, uh, Super Smash Bros. Brawl and Kingdom Hearts 2. Both games worked just fine with the default setup, except controls felt a little looser than either using a GameCube controller or DualShock 2. Perhaps I could tweak settings a bit more, or adjust the feeling of them over time, but I came away unsatisfied. When using the right touchpad to launch a smash attack or control a camera in general. One bright side though, Aether SX2 auto detected the Steam controller and didn't require as much effort as Dolphin to set up, which I can definitely appreciate. But the takeaway here is largely that the controller is plenty capable to use like any other controller. But the two grip buttons may not be fully remappable and the trackpads are bound to feel much different to use compared to traditional joysticks. Personal preference could make a huge difference here for sure. For most people though, uh, I don't think it'd be worth the hassle to go through. I'd recommend just using an Xbox controller or something similar instead. As a final use case, I wanted to explore the one supported way the controller is actually intended to be used with Android, Steam Link. And good news, multiplayers! Connecting the controller wirelessly works as intended. Once the controller is detected, it's easy enough to start the stream, pick a game, and access all of your desktop computer's controller configurations. There's largely no difference between using the Steam controller with Windows or via Steam Link on Android. Because, you know, all it's doing is opening a special remote desktop connection to play Steam games. If you only need to use the controller on Android with Steam Link, you're going to have as good a time as any. It's worth saying that Steam Link on Android isn't the most pristine experience though. Even while using a Wi-Fi 6 connection on my Fold 3 and sitting within a two meter radius of both my tower and router, the connection didn't feel perfect. I've historically had similar experiences with this app, which kind of sucks. On other devices, the solution has typically been to use a wired internet connection, but that's not really ideal for phones. Maybe if you have an Android tablet that you're looking to use, it might work better, but for phones, being wired at all is kind of a hassle. Plus, actually getting the Steam controller connected was also a bit of a hassle. Even while technically connected to my phone, whether wired or not, Steam Link wasn't showing my controller as available and kept defaulting to touch controls. I ultimately had to manually disable touch controls in the settings and ignore the lack of controller confirmation to get things working correctly. I'm actually really hoping that y'all have a better luck with this app than I did because eek. To recap, I looked at using the Steam Controller with Android 12 through streaming apps, emulators, and Steam Link. The Myriad connection issues between the controller and Android resulted in a wired connection being needed outside Steam Link to reliably use the apps I tested. For streaming apps, the controller functioned adequately by mimicking a more standard controller. Unfortunately, trackpads proved a poor substitution for joysticks, and the grip buttons 
lost all function. These same issues persisted with emulation tests as well, where applicable. Technically, I was able to remap some buttons to better adjust my playstyle from Mario Kart, but I kept running into awkward edge cases with the hypersensitive trackpads. The entire experience left a sour taste in my mouth, and I wished I was using an Xbox controller instead the entire time. The one bright side is Steam Link, which actually officially supports the Steam controller. Via Steam Link, the controller is able to access all the configurations and settings used by my Windows computer, and works just as well as that computer accordingly. If you can get a solid connection, it's probably the best possible experience you can get with the Steam controller on Android. In fact, I'd only recommend you go through the hassle of connecting a Steam controller to an Android device if you either really want to experiment with settings or plan to use it with the Steam Link app. However, the Android app's finicky user experience makes this more of a bonus for folks who already use the controller with another computer, rather than something I'd recommend buying a Steam controller specifically to use. At the end of the day, we reach the same conclusion as with Windows. Outside Steam, the controller is temperamental to use. Unlike Windows, though, that temperamentality can entirely break the controller's usability. I'd like to hear from y'all, though. Have you had a better experience with this than me? Do you think there's another better use case for the Steam controller on Android? Let me know down in the comments. Also, as usual, if you enjoy the video, go ahead and click the like button and then use the mouse mode on your Steam controller to pull the trigger on that subscribe button. We have plenty of tech videos on the horizon you won't want to miss. But that's all for today. Until next time, catch you later.